Many attackers, many hackers are uh, very socially aware. They're very good at manipulating conversations and talking to people to get them to reveal information. Uh, most stereotypes have ha attackers and hackers as just these nerdy guys sitting in a dark room, click clacking away on a keyboard. Now, there are going to be hackers like that, but there are many hackers who are just very good at talking to people, very good at uh, conning people, and that's social engineering in a nutshell. So attack principles are different principles within social engineering. So different methodologies, different ways attackers will uh, take advantage of people and the way in which these attackers talk to people, these are all principles of social engineering. So these are going to hold true for any type of social engineering attack, whether it's a phishing attack, a voice phishing attack, a regular phishing attack with email, maybe a, a chat or an in-person conversation. These are all just general techniques that people are going to use, these attackers are going to use. And remember, attackers, when they use social engineering attacks, like to take advantage of social norms. Uh, normally accepted forms of behavior. Attackers like to take advantage of human kindness. They want to uh, take advantage of the fact that people like to hold the door for open for other people or that they want to reciprocate. Uh, if you do something nice for me, I should do something nice for you. That's a big principle within social engineering. Authority and intimidation is one technique often used by attackers. Attackers will claim to be a legitimate authority. You might know these uh, attacks where people, a vishing attack where attackers will call individuals and claim they're from the IRS or from the FBI. Hey, we're from the IRS. We've detected uh, fraudulent activity within your tax records. Can you please confirm your social security number with us? And they'll try and sound very convincing. They'll try and sound like they're from the IRS. They might say, oh, I'm uh, from the IRS. This is my agent number, uh, 628874. Uh, my name's uh, Mr. Miles Barkley, and I uh, am representing uh, your case. We've detected fraudulent activity on your account. Possibly, I just need you to verify your social security with me and some basic information so we can talk about the details on your account. And they might talk to you like that. And some people, especially if you catch people unawares or maybe they're distracted by something else or they might have seen something on their credit report that is a little off, maybe they would be fooled by this. Uh, senior citizens are often fooled by these types of attacks. And attackers take advantage of that. They want to use that to, uh, to get as many people to fall for these attacks as possible. They might also take advantage of a power structure within an organization. So they might be claimed to be from the IT team. You know, they might call an employee within a company and say, hey, we're from the IT team. We need to uh, verify some settings with you real quick remotely. I need you to do this and this on your laptop and then read off these numbers to me. And the employee might say, oh, okay, you're from the IT team. Oh, it's Chuck from IT. I need you to read off these numbers for me real quick. We're doing a big server update. Oh, uh, sure. They might catch somebody unawares. You know, if the attacker has some basic knowledge of the organization and the attack and their targets, they can be very successful at these types of attacks. This is can be a form of spear phishing as well. So you you know you have some basic information about the company, you know the positions within the company, so you might target somebody, maybe an intern, and that intern has some access that the attackers could use to further exploit. So the uh, attackers would claim they're from IT or claim they're from management and then try and gather information from those people. Now this could be over the phone, this can also be with email. You can claim authority with an email and you can try and intimidate people. And Attackers take advantage of the fact that a lot of people like to avoid conflict too. Uh, that's one way in which attackers can be successful with this technique. A consensus is when attackers take advantage of social proof. Social proof is when you see uh, many other people doing an action, so you think that action is acceptable, or you know everybody's doing it, oh, it must be pretty okay. So uh, you say an attacker's calling an employee within an organization, you know, and that employee's giving them some pushback. Hey, this is Chuck from IT. I need you to email these files to me. Uh, 
I need to, we're doing this big server install and I need some information from you. Well, maybe you know the employee is giving you some pushback. Maybe um, Susan is kind of suspicious of who you are and she doesn't really know it, Chuck. Oh well, you know Karen uh, emailed me those same files last week, so I don't know why you're making a problem about it. We just need these files really quickly. I'd really appreciate it. Yeah, the, they'll point to some example where other people have been performing these actions and have been uh, doing these same types of activities. So to give that person some social proof, oh, well, if Karen did that, well, I know Karen. Maybe the attacker had looked up a organization chart within the company. Oh, okay, if Karen did it, well, I guess it's kind of standard. And maybe she would then be more apt to uh, email the files. Or say an uh, attacker would claim to be part of a charity, you know, contacting a person within, with through email. So they would say, oh, hey, uh, we need this amount of dollars or we need this amount of money in Bitcoin. Uh, please donate. We've had so many people donate over the past few months. We really appreciate all your support. Uh, you know, look at all the kind things we've done and all the progress we've made since the last two quarters please donate your Bitcoin at this link. And that could just be, oh, somebody would read that email. Oh, I guess they're you know, doing a lot of good. Maybe I'll consider donating. They might even, the attackers might even set up a dummy website that looks like, oh, this, is, uh, this seems kind of legitimate. A couple of months ago, there was an attack on Twitter where you had high profile celebrities. You had uh, former President Barack Obama, you had Elon Musk, you had Bill Gates. Their uh, Twitter accounts were hacked okay and from those Twitter accounts attackers were asking people to donate Bitcoin they're saying oh I'll double your Bitcoin though they were speaking as if they were those people they were saying oh I'll double your, Bit your Bitcoin if you donate some Bitcoin to this address and that was like a form of social proof or consensus it was a it, it was a little bit between uh, authority and consensus because you had lots of people commenting on this within Twitter so you had this social media uh, buy-in, and then you also had the authority from those individuals themselves. The, the uh, tweets were coming from their actual account. If you want to learn how this attack was perpetrated, uh, we have a great blog article on our website. It goes into detail about it, but it's a good example. Scarcity is when uh, an attacker tries to, take it, tries to claim that something is going to you know, exist only for a limited time. And this is oftentimes with maybe a scam where they're trying to sell you something that might be illegitimate. Oh, with the Bitcoin example. Oh, we can uh, donate, we can double your Bitcoin if you donate to this site, but only if you do it within the next 24 hours. Otherwise, the offer's closed. So that scarcity gives people, uh, makes people panic a little bit, makes them think, oh, I gotta get on this right now or else it's never gonna be there. Uh, so pretty self-explanatory, I think, with uh, scarcity. Urgency is the same type of thing, but it's time sensitive. So scarcity would be more, uh, you have to get on board with this. We only have X number of slots. We only have 50 slots available. The first 50 people who donate their Bitcoin are going to get their Bitcoin doubled. Urgency would be, okay, you need to donate your Bitcoin by 9 p.m. If you don't do it by 9 p.m., then it's going to go away, you're not going to have the offer. So the attackers might even say, someone's life's in danger, I need this information, you need to read me the serial number off your laptop. Or I need you to tell me uh, the make and model of the server you're using. We have a fire here and we have to put out the fire, we need the configuration setting for that server, you got to tell me right now. Uh, okay, it's this, we're using uh, if, Windows Server 2010 and this is a server is this model and make. Okay, great, bye. <laughs> Something like that would be urgency and it works. This is why these are established attack methodologies because attackers find success with them. Familiarity and trust. This is where a attacker takes advantage or exploits a target by introducing that target to something familiar, something that they like. Good example is a. Uh, when I worked with a penetration testing firm, and we targeted. We had a, a contract to do penetration tests 
on a certain privately owned corporation. They were a government contracting firm. They wanted to test their security, uh, their perimeter defenses, their network defenses. They wanted to test how secure their organization was. Now they had very good network defenses. We did some reconnaissance. We determined that they had good perimeter defense. So what we decided to do, we knew the CEO and we knew what he liked. We knew that he liked uh, the, uh, the Capitals, the hockey team, and we knew that he liked a certain charity. So we crafted a message for him, a PDF, and we said, hey, donate to this charity. You can donate by buying these tickets to the Capitals. And it was his favorite charity and his favorite sports team. And he saw this email. It seemed legitimate. Uh, everything seemed on the up and up. He clicked, he opened the email, he opened the PDF. He actually went forward with the donation. And because he opened that PDF, we had a malicious script in the PDF that executed, gave us access to his computer remotely. So we had access to the CEO's computer remotely. We were able to copy whole hard drives versus worth of information and present it to the security team at the end of the penetration test saying, this is what we were able to get. So we absolutely exploited the familiarity and trust factor there. Uh, but that's what attackers will do. They'll give you something that you're familiar with that you already trust. Like in that Twitter example, you already trust those people who are making those tweets. That's why that attack was successful. It could have been much more successful, but it was successful. It was as successful as it was. So that's uh, familiarity and trust. And those are the different attack methodologies. 